All right, it's Friday. Uh, so again, Fridays are generally kind of a review day, um, trying to incorporate what we've learned into some other examples, try to get it down a little better so we remember it. Uh, keep exercising our uh, programming uh, muscles, uh, develop this sort of stuff. Um, so we're gonna look at, uh, um, well, first I'm just gonna talk to you a little bit about formatting. And then uh, we're gonna have you, You there's a bunch of practice problems. We'll look at those. Uh, and then there's the assignments and there's two options for the assignments. Uh, so you can do work on any of those uh, today. Um, I just wanna talk a little bit about formatting because for the assignments, you have to do some formatting. So I've updated the learning material to include some formatting examples uh, here. So in Java, there are three common ways of formatting numbers. Uh, the oldest and more traditional is what is called the printf statement. This statement has been around for a long, long time. Um, and it's like a print line, but it has formatting in it, or it's like a print because it doesn't have a line feed in it by default. So you say your quote like, here I'm gonna, I have a decimal, I have the cost, uh, or the score, oh, this actually should be the score. I'm gonna display the, the cost uh, with, so, with zero decimals. So I have my whatever the string I wanna display. And then I have a template here that starts with a pre, uh, percent sign. And then if it's a decimal number, it's an F uh, here. If it's an uh, integer, it's a D uh, here, um, which is kind of confusing because you'd think, uh, D might be for double, but F is for floating point. And you may think I was for, B for integer, but it's D. Uh, so it's kind of confusing. Uh, but it's just percent. And then how many decimals, like 0 0.0 decimals F. And then you close your quote. And after the quote, you do comma. And then you say the co whatever variable you want. And that variable is stuck in here. So what that prints out is it'll print out um, uh, the decimal score with zero decimals, and it'll just print off one, one, two, two, and that's all uh, here. I think it actually puts the period to one, one, two, two period uh, here. Now, because this isn't a print line, we also, we can use this little percent n to do a new line character, so we do that. So this is what the textbooks generally describe and that stuff. I'm not a big fan of printfs because again, no one other than Java 1 and Java 2 students use them generally. So another option that I think is close is the string.format. You say system.out.println, or you can do print or print line. So this is use our standard. You say what you want to print all here, and then you just do a plus you know, like you were going to print off a variable, like you'd say cost, but rather than doing cost, you put the cost in a format statement. So you say string dot format, and then you put in the format string here in quotes, and then you put the cost. So you, rather than having the variable, you stick this, the variable inside a string dot format uh, command. Uh, and again, so what, and then we have formats in both of these for, this is like no decimal places, this is for a comma, you know, so like it would print off uh, 1,000, one, one comma, one, one, two uh, there. So it'll put a comma for every thousands if you have that in here. This is like a traditional uh, currency amount or, or something like it. It's comma and point two. So two decimal places and commas in that line. So again, the string formats a common way. Oh, and I like that way for Java 1, Java 2 students. Now, what in your advanced courses, what way do we actually teach? <laughs> in advanced courses, we actually teach a decimal, something like decimal format, where you create a decimal formatter here. So you have to create a decimal formatter uh, and you give it some name. And then you use that decimal formatter to format your variable. Uh, down here. So you use that decimal format. So you're thinking, Tom, why in the world would I want to do it that way? That seems really hard uh, to do. It's at least a whole new line, another step here, and I need a different formatter for each format. Why would I ever do that? 
So here's a question to you. Have you ever seen uh, numbers that aren't formatted with like this, what, where, let me just, where that wouldn't be formatted as one comma one, two, two, period, three, three. Anyone see any, does anyone know of any place or any anywhere where it wouldn't be formatted like that? So. So what, well, there are a lot of like non-English speaking countries, especially in Europe where like, instead of the comma, you put in a space or a period. Uh, there and in and when we put a decimal place, they would put a comma uh, there uh, for that. So, depending on where you are in the world, there are different formats to these numbers. Also, um, as far as the dollar sign goes, how currencies are set up are also quite different. Um, like, did you grow up like in the U.S.? We put a lot of dollar signs at the beginning of a currency, but in a lot of countries, they put the the dollar, the, the amount, and then the currency symbol at the end of that uh, stuff. Uh, and so uh, this format here actually will, the reason we have to create this is it looks at the locale of the computer where you're located in the world and creates a decimal format that matches that locale. So if you are in Germany, this will print off differently than if you're in the United States uh, here. And again, so like when we're doing phone apps and stuff like that, we generally try to use this sort of stuff so that your phone app will display decimals in different things. My sister teaches Spanish and has her whole phone set to Spanish and stuff. And so um, it always drives me crazy, but it just confuses me. And I, you know, I understand a little Spanish, but uh, it's numbers actually that cause me more consternation sometimes than the Spanish is that our numbers are just displayed differently there. Okay, so enough of that. You can choose, you can format any way you want uh, in this class. Uh, so what are we gonna do today? I'm just gonna mention the, uh, do a quick overview of the two assignments. So you can do any, either of these two assignments. The first option is to calculate your tuition uh, here. So I've tried to update it with this year's tuition uh, values here. Um, and so again, if you're taking between 12 and 18 credits, you pay this much tuition. Uh, if you're taking more than 18, any additional credits are at a set amount. If you're taking less than 12 credits, your tuition is just this times the number of credits uh, for that. Um, if you're taking, uh, there's a health fee. If you're taking nine or more credits, you get the health fee. If you're taking six more credits, there's a student services fee. There's a technology fee uh, here. Uh, and then you want to do your output here. So you want to ask the user how many credits they have at the students and then print off their fees. Okay, so that's the first option. The second option is shipping rates. So let's say you're going to ship a package. Uh, you check how big the package is. You weigh it and you measure, uh, and, and you measure generally it's like circumference, I think is what they want. So we're going to ask for the um, weight and its measurement. If its weight is less than 16 ounces and it measures less than 12 inches or wide, we're just doing one width, one size, I guess here, then it's dollar. Otherwise, we, uh, if, if either, if it's bigger or weighs more or both, uh, we check if it's, uh, we multiply the weight times this and the width times this and whatever is bigger, we use that as the amount. And we also say shipping in to Alaska and Hawaii are doubled. And finally, if the shipping rate is over $10, we're going to just cap it at $10 here. So if it's at like, if it costs like $12.50, we're just going to say it's $10 there. These are made up shipping rules. These are not actually the actual shipping rules that for any company. Just, you know, don't, don't use these to ship something, okay? So again, you want to just ask the user what weight uh, length uh, here, and then 
calculate the then the, the where you're going, what what uh, what city you're getting shipped to, what state, and then calculate the shipping cost based on that. So you have to do one of those two. Now I want to want to note that I've changed the submission stuff a little bit. Um, let's go back to this one. Um, what I want you to do now, we were having you zip up a uh, the NetBeans project. And what's just coming out really, it's it's hard for students to kind of do that. And it's hard for us to grade that because we have to download it and unzip it and do it. And I also want to have you start doing some reflections on it uh, here so that especially if you're using you know, the help of AI to do this, I have you thinking about it some more. So what I want you to do is just create a document uh, here, MS Word doc, a Word doc, a Google doc, any sort of document on Paste your code from uh, your NetBeans in the head, run it, paste the output in this document, and then do a reflection uh, here on some problem you had and how you how you fix that problem. And it's fine to have asked a friend or a TA or instructor or AI for help. Just write a couple sentences describing where you ran into the problems and what you did uh, to overcome those. Trying to get away from you just doing, taking the uh, assignment and just pasting them into AI and submitting it and just having AI do the whole thing. Well, in a perfect world, I'd like you to try it, get stuck somewhere and ask either AI or someone else for help, get some help, learn something, and then move on with it. So that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, because if you're doing that, then you should be in a good spot later on uh, in, in more advanced courses and stuff like that for this. Okay. So next, I mean, so I'm just going to work on some practice problems. I said, should you either do one of the practice problems or, um, work on the assignments? So the whole bunch of practice problems, uh, some of my favorite practice problems are here this week. Uh, we start the magic eight problem. This was an old game. I don't know what you call it, the little thing we had back in the 80s. It's a little magic eight cube. You grabbed it, turned it over, and then there was uh, liquid in it, and this thing would float up and display uh, one of six things uh, there that would it say. It would either say, it is certain, uh, as I see it, yes. And so you'd ask it questions like, you know, am I going to have fun this weekend? And you'd turn it over uh, and would tell you. It was kind of like a you know, I don't know, a, a future predictor that would predict the future uh, in a very, of course, scientific random way uh, there. So that's that's one of them. There's other ones. We we do some, we return to some with more detail, the neuron lights here. The cancer detection, we're getting more accurate with our cancer detection. This actually comes from a machine learning example. So again, we're checking some more characteristics on where, if this uh, tumor is, uh, malignant or benign uh, here. Uh, so again, we have lots of lots of different app, uh, options that you can choose from uh, here. So again, I suggest you take one of these options and just one of these and just do it as practice. And then again, if you want to work on the assignment, you can work on that. Sound good? Okay. Let's see which one do I want to work on? I'm going to do the magic eight ball. 